Yo, what's up? I'm now sitting in the Neo EL6. I'm actually doing a range test. And uh, yeah, you guys know this stretch. I like it because um, it's nice and quiet here. And also the car, yeah, how is the car? Ooh, it's, I like it, it's nice. I shouldn't say nice too often, but it's a great car. Yeah, I need to avoid saying the same pointless things over and over again, like, uh, like, you know, that's also one word. Some people say basically a lot, I try to avoid it. Basically, we are done now. Basically, it's quite cold outside. Basically, this is a nice car. No, no. When you, once you notice some people say that, that becomes annoying. I also tend to say other words that is annoying uh, over time. I repeat them. Uh, yeah, but okay. Anyway, today was not about that. Today is about stolen bike. So I was waiting to shoot a video about this, and um, yeah, now I'm just. I figured that okay, whatever, let's just go for it. Oh yeah, by the way, the reason why I chose this stretch is because the landscape is so freaking beautiful. Look at this. Oh yeah. It's been snowing a couple of days ago and then it stopped and um, yeah, the road's been cleared and it's still cold outside, minus three degrees Celsius though, and not too much wind, so the the snow is just hanging on the trees that were pretty nice. Well, today is about Stolenberg. So, you know, the problem with Stolenberg is that um, it's only available in Norway. You can either buy it online if you're a Norwegian citizen or you can, if you live in another country, preferably in Europe, or actually it doesn't matter, right? Uh, you can come to Norway and visit one of the Stolenberg stores. Uh, previously, they could ship over to Sweden and uh, Finland, I think it was, but they stopped doing that many years ago. But okay, so my friend uh, Uwe Höppner, you can probably hear it on the name, that, that's um, German. He really wanted some Stormbike uh, clothes and he was willing to test something with me. So we did, uh, which was that he ordered some Stormbike clothes and then got it shipped to me. And then I forwarded it to him in Germany. <laughs> so. And I also asked Stoltenberg about this afterwards. Uh, do you guys uh, do you guys approve this method? And they were like, "Yeah, oh, we're cool. We're going with it. They don't care. No, it's cool." Um, except for that, of course. Um, yeah, they, there's no refund and stuff here. So, oh shit! I have to get past this mother trucker. I don't want to camp too long in the blind spot. So let's just speed up a little bit and then slow down and then make, avoid too much schmutz. Also, in windscreen. Sorry for that. But okay, so the way it works now is that, um, um, well, it, it depends where you live, right? But wait, oh shit, oh, are you kidding me? Freaking LiDAR is blo- oh gee. For helvete. I'm doing a test now. Oh. I'm doing a, a 90 test and the freaking LiDAR is blocked again. I, I thought about it. I saw the LiDAR and I was thinking, nah, it's not that smoothish, is it? Uh, is it going to be blocked? Well, apparently it is blocked now. Ah, oh, shit. I can't. Okay, the problem is that I can't use adaptive cruise control. Well, and then there's also no dumb cruise control. Normally, if you wait a couple of minutes, the LiDAR will be clear and it will work and then it stops working and shit. Oh. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, back to the point. So what you need to do is that um, if you want to buy stolen by clothes, I can help you. This is something extra I do, uh, just a trial, I suppose, because um, it might be a lot of extra work. I'm not sure. Um, so and also there will be extra cost involved here some import tax and stuff and you have to pay vat okay let, let's just walk through the whole uh, procedure so if you want to buy something from storing bag you can what you what you should maybe do beforehand is check out the website storing bag i know unfortunately it's not in uh, english you have to use google translate and there's an in viking language there and um so you, maybe you should check out beforehand what you want and then you can contact me and I will provide you with um, my, uh, my postal address and some information. I don't remember exactly what uh, it needed, but at least 
my, yeah, my name. So um, I will provide with information, and then you actually go online and then you purchase all the stuff you want, and you have to pay with credit card or whatever they have. Probably you have credit credit card, but uh, you have to then ship it to me. Yeah, so you send it to me, uh, Bjorn Elon, my address. I will provide with that, and also, yeah, uh, I will, <laughs> I will have to pro provide. I have to show. I mean, my I can use my other email address than the Tesla Bjorn email address. You can email that one. It's in the description. It's just Tesla Bjorn at gmail dot com. Um, uh, I will because I mentioned this. In the video, there will be lots of people sending me junk or spamming me with stuff like ah, Bjorn, um, which car should I buy, or uh, yeah, or, or which OBD adapter are you using, or when are you testing Highland, when are you testing EV9, when you're testing. So, but uh, okay, that's that's the name of the game. I just have to deal with that. But at least hopefully there will be people who contact me, send me email on that mailbox about stolen bag. Yeah, but. So, yeah, so then after, they are, I mean, Stormberg is quite quick uh, shipping. Seems like they have some, uh, maybe some, um, uh, it depends, but they, they might have uh, storage or some warehouse uh, nearby. Uh, so I usually get the item or get the package after a couple of days only. They're really quick. Uh, also, yeah, it depends also which, which uh, delivery method is preferred. Um, we can discuss that uh, also, but uh, I prefer. Um, well, there are many, many different ways to do it. I can get it shipped to my home, or I can pick it up. I actually prefer picking it up manually, because if I ship it to my home, then I might not be avail. I might not be home when they are there, right? Um, okay, and then yeah. Sorry, it's a bit complicated, but this is the only way to do it. Well, it's bullet eye. Okay, on the other side. But, and then once I get the parcel, um, I guess I could double check the weight and the size. Yeah, uh, but it's supposed to also be available in the shipping information. But I think I should do a, a little quality check. Um, but I'm not gonna open the par package. So I will have to pick up the par package, go home, check weight, size a little bit, and then I will email you and tell you how much it will cost to ship this to your country, to, to your address. Uh, and then I have to prepare the shipment, uh, maybe some, um, how is this again, uh, toll information. Yeah, I think I have to write what the, con what the package contains, roughly the value. Um, and then I ship it, but then, but then you also have to send money to me for, uh, for the ship. Uh, shipping cost. Um, and the, <laughs> yeah, and since the problem is, oh, you can, well, you can send it to me on PayPal. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, send it to PayPal. Yeah, that's great. And the only problem is that PayPal takes a, a cut, and the cut is depending on how big. They usually take around one one point five percent cut. I don't remember exactly. R roughly one percent cut plus a fixed amount. So that, that's why when someone donates uh, $2 to me and bring PayPal takes 50% cut. <laughs> I don't remember how much it was, but uh, something like that, roughly. Um, yeah, and then I get the money for the shipment and that's fine. And I will then prepare the package and ship it to you. And usually in a couple of days you get it. And I will just use uh, Posten, po Nor Norwegian Postal Service thing. No, no FedEx or uh, uh, what do they call again? UPS or the other, what the German one? DHL. Yeah, th those are kind of expensive, but Posten works fine. Uh, and this, this stuff doesn't get lost. It's just closed. Who's going to steal it, right? Yeah, but also when you get it, uh, you probably also have to pay uh, import tax or some shit. So we are paying double tax here because you have to pay VAT because in Norway, Norwegian VAT, we unfortunately can't get the VAT refund. Um, yeah. And then, oh yeah, and also when I tried this with Uber, uh, there was extra cost involved. 
and roughly, I think it was roughly 30% extra. <laughs> Wait, plus the shipping. I think at this time I covered the shipping for him. So you just, yeah, keep in mind that it's going to cost, let's say 30 to 50% extra if you do this. But at least uh, many stolen by clothes, I wouldn't call them cheap, even though they are from China, but they are inexpensive. They're not that expensive clothes. That's why I bought them in the first place 10 years ago, because I was a poor bastard. Now I'm just a bastard. <laughs> I'm not a rich bastard yet. Um, but yeah, so they are fairly affordable and uh, good clothes uh, and also sustainable. So yeah, at least there is a way to do it. Oh yeah, and also another thing, when, when you do the checkout, yeah, very important. When you check out, when you buy, when you purchase online, uh, you should also use my uh, uh, discount code. So th this will work, kind of. Shit, I can't, still can't use, uh, what? It's later, it's still smoothish, what the heck? So yeah, um, I don't know what you guys think. Huh? It, it, does it sound like a good idea? Is it too expensive? I think many people will be like, ah, no, 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 screw that shit, man, it's too expensive. Yeah, <laughs> I totally understand. And also kind of complicated for me. And uh, am I making lots of money on this? Nah. Uh, yeah, I will be getting some commission, yeah, for, uh, for sales that I, I wouldn't get because suddenly there will be Germans and Swedes and sp Spanish people, I don't know, uh, Chinese people. Okay, that would be... Ironic, man, if Chinese people would buy <laughs> since it's already made in China. No, but um, um, yeah, so I'll be making, of course, some money, but there's also some uh, some time involved here picking up items. And then, and, yeah, what, what I could do maybe to speed things up is that if I find out before one, if I can then master this, become a ninja, I can then figure that beforehand uh, how big the parcel is. And I can then prepare the shipment before I pick it up. So, so what I actually do is that uh, I pick it up preferably at Posten, right? Not Posten, no, those are different also, yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, if you can choose, use Posten, choose Posten, maybe Rema Tusen, Gustad or somewhere, right? No, wait, or Extra, no, no, Rema Tusen, yeah, or Extra Saga, yeah, somewhere in Yesheim. Um, um, Posten, which is the national postal service thing. Postnord is just some. Uh, that's not the the yeah, the postal service, the the official one, the governmental thing. Well, actually, I think Posten has been commercialized now. Everything is commercialized, even the train, right, in Norway and the bus. But but um, okay, sorry, a little bit rambling here. But um, what I'm saying is that um, what I could do here in the future is to just pick up the parcel and they say, ah, we're gonna pick up this one. <laughs> and the, the guy at the counter is like, okay, here, here's the parcel. And then I'm like, okay. And then I want to ship this right away. And then you have to print out, yeah, and then I have a QR code and they print out a new label and then they ship it <laughs> to Germany or whichever country it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's also a possibility if I streamline things. So that, that, at least that will save me some time. Uh, and of course, obviously, there is no return policy here. If uh, your clothes is too big, too small, uh, or it's kaput, dead on arrival, or, or some shit, or you chose the wrong color, or, I don't know, then um, uh, I don't think I can deal with the return stuff. If you would send it back to me and then have to send it back to uh, stolen bag and how to communicate with them. So that, that becomes too much, man. I, uh, my main focus is making videos and raise uh, and feed my wife, who can then feed my baby. Uh, so this is just a test thing. The problem with internet and YouTube is that once I post this video, it's going to be out there forever until I delete it. <laughs> so, so I'll see how it goes. If it comes too big of a problem, I just have to say no, nine, nine, nine. Okay, can't do it anymore. Uh, uh, or I have to hire someone to do it for me. Uh, uh, but then, what is the gain, right? Uh, well, I mean, the the, the, the whole purpose uh, is uh, this is not to make money. Be, ah, Bjorn, I like your videos, but you're being too greedy nowadays. Uh, no, no, no. Um, just the time it takes to do this shit. Um, is most likely not worth it. 
uh, for the commission. It depends also, of course, if someone buys a lot, yeah, then I might get a little bit. But uh, uh, I'm just doing this to, to uh, make Stoltenberg available for my community but also maybe make it a little bit more visible. Maybe I should track this on a spreadsheet so that I can send a spreadsheet to Stoltenberg uh, next year and say, hey, you see here, lots of Germans bought. Look at the amount they bought, huh? Why don't you guys start selling in Deutschland, huh? Chop, chop, chop. Yeah, okay, no, but uh, we'll see. We'll see, it's just for fun. Okay, we'll just try this run, all right? So, uh, initially also, it wasn't my idea. It was Uwe Höppner. No, I'm not gonna, okay, sorry, sorry, I'm not gonna blame him. But I'm just saying that he was the one who was interested in this. And then for me, I'm, okay, the, the reason why I'm saying this is because there are too many damn haters out there. Every time I talk about something that involves money, the damn haters come out like, oh yeah, you mother trucker, you know, rich bastard. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, yeah. Are you, are you jealous because I built um, a pool, huh? Oh, I'd be like, have fun uh, heating it up. I said, okay, it's my house my pool you know not your pool fortunately i'm gonna enjoy it <laughs> i'm just gonna have it there and have a, a nice uh, smug face like <laughs> yeah it cost me a damn fortune but um yeah okay anyway so that was my little rant about the stone bike i mean about <laughs> about the stuff and uh, yeah i should also make a, a house update uh, soon it has been a bit wait Still can't use light. What the? F e the you the hell with the fun or so? I mean, yeah, the washing machine will it function? Hey, how how funny can it run? How no it locked? Huh? Raw raw dog. What what's this man sheet that I? For buying a man sheet, you can you can do 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 fine wear out. Huh? They can do dirty wear either. So funger ikke när jag var mansjitten. Ja men vad här vill inte fungera i norr Norge. Det är absolut 100% säker. Okay, that was a little bit rant. Um, maybe you can google about the uh, saltar kassetten. <laughs> I forgot to mention han gammal Erik. <laughs> okay, but anyway, man the lighter is not working. I'm trying to do a 90 test here. I'm trying to have even speed. Now I have to drive manually. But actually, you know what? Since I'm driving manually right now, I actually drive smoother than the the Neo Pilot <laughs> because the freaking Neo Pilot. If I set the cruise control to to 93 kilometers per hour on the speedo, it would just go 15 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, 15 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, 15 kilowatt. 20 kilowatt. <laughs> I wonder how much energy it wastes. Uh, wait, wait, waste, waste, wait, wastes. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Posten, there is the male uh, the <laughs> Postman Pat. He drives an EV. Wait, what car is that? Kangoo. Oh shit! A freaking Renault Kangoo. Oh man, I feel you, brother. Oh shit. Well, at least he's not driving uh, Paxter. <laughs> I've seen those guys, man. They drive Paxter in freaking winter. Oh shit. Yeah, Postman Pat drives EV. I can send you guys. EV is EV license plate number EV83417. You can look up on the on the car what what kind of car it is. Yeah. So um, yeah, um Normally I will have a one hour rant. Well, I, actually it might be one hour rant. I might include some other shit. Yeah, okay. Anyway, let me just see. Can I? Still can't use the right radar, right? What the heck? Okay, but yeah, um, sorry. I haven't made a house update in the longest time. Uh, I'm going to make a more visual one where you can see shit. But I can tell you now, uh, now at least uh, in this podcast style that, yeah, um, we we managed to get set up mostly in the house you know and uh, outside and there's some some purchase we have to do um we have to buy some shit i have to go to ikea also but i don't want a typical ikea look on inside the house right uh so but at least uh, if but then where do i buy the furniture then if you go to Boohoo's or shade like some of the furnitures are so expensive like you can't like i i i don't know i don't don't understand how 
a piece of wood or some plastic or you know stuff in general how it can be so expensive uh, you have machines manufacturing things right it's not built by slaves is it uh, well actually if that, that would be even cheaper if it was built by slaves <laughs> no there's always a master who takes all the money no but um, so you can buy a piece of uh, like a, a like a chair or a, or a, or I don't know, shelf or something, right? For uh, maybe 1,000 euro, you know? Like, things are really expensive in Norway, it's, uh, some brands or some places. And then the problem is that they kind of look the same, uh, the design. Uh, and then I ended up with IKEA because they look okay. You don't see that. Okay, some items are typical. Like when you see it, you know. Okay, that's IKEA mall. You know, that's yeah. But Billy, for example, Billy. Everyone knows Billy, but it's just a shelf. How 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 can you make a white shelf different than other shelves, right? But the Billy shelf, everyone knows it. It's cheap. Um, but we want we don't want it in wooden style. We want just something plain white. But then if you buy Billy and you buy. Uh, Oh, what was it going to get? You buy the door for it and with glass, then suddenly it looks a lot better. And many people don't recognize that's typical IKEA. So I actually also bought some uh, shelves, metal shelves for uh, for the um, garage, two of them. They cost 900 uh, nook each. Don't remember what the name was. They, they always have funny names like Eva or Gunnar, you know. Um, but I still haven't painted the garage yet because uh, it's all about uh, uh, prioritizing stuff and before win I mean, before Christmas the CPM on my uh, uh, channel is really high and then every like right after Christmas oh, I'm sorry right after New Year actually yeah roughly in Christmas New Year then the CPM plummets my income plummets it happens every year I've noticed this for the past five years I think once my channel has some significant size I noticed this which means that I should spend the time before Christmas making a lot of videos. Uh, in a couple of days now, I will pick up Fisker Ocean. Finally, the freaking Fisker. Yeah, it's called Draw Fisken, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Um, but uh, stuff that is not too important, like painting the garage, can I can do that after New Year when everything on is fucked up anyway after Christmas parties and. Yeah, and nobody buys stuff anymore. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. If you guys uh, get lots of uh, advertisement on my videos, uh, I, I don't know how, I mean, it's not my fault really, because I just set it so that YouTube automatically chooses um, ad breaks. And during Christmas, they go more aggressive because advertisers advertise more aggressive. They want to sell shit. Uh, it's just a shopping spree. It's a whole the whole Christmas thing, you know. It's just, everything is built around Christmas. There's shopping spree. You get so-called half tax during Christmas. In December, you get half tax, so you get a bigger payment if you're an office rat. Um, but you don't really get half tax because the the government they never give you money. There is no there is no free lunch from the government. They will just call it half tax, but then they just spread the, the tax for the rest of the other months yeah <laughs> but um yeah so there's all the whole shopping free before shopping spree before christmas we also did some stuff uh, wifey wanted to uh, decorate the house with some christmas lights because our neighbors had some but they, they are not the, the kind of family that goes freaking bananas with christmas decoration i was like oh good because if my neighbors went full out freaking uh, coca-cola house right for with lights and uh santa claus and reindeer all over the place then I, uh, what the fuck do i do then how do i also have to buy lots of shit um and and th that that's not the problem buying stuff installing it is a problem how the heck do i get up on the second floor how do i get six meter up there to install some lights and shit uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah but I, I've installed a little bit, okay, just to kind of blend in with the other guys. But I also noticed that um, um, in the old neighborhood, um, 
at uh, Titutgranda, Arlabru. Uh, there were not that many people who uh, decorated for Christmas. There was my nice neighbor, yeah, uh, and but that was pretty much it. Uh, yeah, but in this neighborhood here, uh, yes, same. Uh, seems like almost every house decorates except for I think two houses um, okay I don't want this to be some kind of religious stuff but I mean it's already relig religious since we're talking about Christmas you know it's like a Jesus uh, thing yeah but um, I think those houses who doesn't decorate they are Muslims and of course they don't celebrate Christmas you know, yeah uh, and that was, I was thinking, oh, maybe that's why uh, at Ollabru, the old house, the V1 house, uh, not many people decorated there because they were Muslims, many of them. Hmm, okay. But we are, uh, I don't know if wife is Buddhist, Buddhist. I'm, I'm a non-believer, I'm a, I'm a uh, believer, no, <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm a, I'm a Justin believer. Uh, I'm not Muslim. Uh, yeah, I'm not Muslim. I'm not Christian. I'm not uh, 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 Buddhist or Hindu. So uh, I believe in science. Yeah, I believe in uh, testing properly. Do your own test. If you don't know what happened in the Bible, go test yourself. See if you can open the ocean or the or the lake like that with some power. Does it work? Because water is non-magnetic. Yeah, I learned it from Electric Boom. I've been watching Electric Boom lately. He's, he's actually a pretty funny guy. <laughs> and also, but he's also very... Uh, it's very educational to watch his videos. Yeah, that's what I like. I've been watching Adam Ragusia lately, but uh, suddenly I just uh, started watching Electric Boom. <laughs> but okay, um, so... Uh, what was I, my point again? Yeah, so so I decorated. We we moved some stuff over. I mean, guys, I, you have no idea. There's been so much work, man. First, I had to dick around with selling the old house and move out of it, and I couldn't afford hiring someone to clean for me, so I had to clean myself. That was a lot of work. Um, and then also the new house and setting up. And man, I I have become a an IKEA uh, assembly ninja. Uh, I know when I see parts, I know exactly how they work. How do you use them to, you know, to poke them from wooden piece in a hole? You have this thing you you tur twist to lock lock in the thing. Yeah, okay, you know. But usually each IKEA furniture takes around. Well, it depends how complex it is, but usually around one to three hours. But at least once I gotten more used to it, I, at least it takes two hours to install something like the Billy uh, shelf with the doors and shit. And then wifey likes it freaking hot in the house. Yeah, that's also another thing I need to show you guys. Um, the heat pump efficiency. We have Niebe system and it's supposed to be Swedish. But yeah, it's been quite cold in November, minus 10, minus 12 degrees Celsius. Uh, then the COP was around two only. I think nowadays when it's uh, minus three degrees, then the COP is more like four. Um, also, I got in touch with the, I suppose the guy who works for Nibe, and he can give me so lots of information. I would like to know how powerful the PTC heater. There's supposed to be, there's supposed to be a PTC heater in there also in case it's really uh, cold. But okay, so I also need to show you guys more of that stuff, but um, uh, what was my, uh, I had to focus here a little bit. Okay, there we go, sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, wifey likes it freaking hot in the house. At least I've seen uh, the thermometer reports 26 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I think it's roughly 26. It's nice and warm at least there. And some other rooms are 22. Yes, yeah, so we have roughly 22 to, wait, but how is this again? 22 in the bedrooms, at least reported from the meter thing there. Um, and then some of the living rooms, uh, downstairs is 26. Upstairs, we don't spend too much time there, it's 25 degrees. And then the washing room and the bathroom, I measure them to be 33 to 35 degrees Celsius. They're freaking hot, but wife also likes it hot like that. So, you know what they say? Happy life, happy wife, right? Yeah, if you wanna have, okay, well, 
but um, yeah, but that means that every time I in assemble those those uh, IKEA furniture, I sweat like a pig. Well, actually, except that pigs don't sweat, right? But uh, yeah, so um, can I use crystal? Oh, I can use pilot. Oh yeah. The slow clap. Now let's see how long it lasts. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so so I've been installing some stuff. I had to purchase. Yeah, I I, I I'm in eco mode now. I try to save as much money as possible. I paid back some money to Idehus. Idehus. Uh, I owe them a shit ton of money because I went overboard with uh, the pool and some shit. It's mostly the pool that blew my uh, budget. Uh, and they had just they normally they don't they they build houses they are not a freaking bank but they made an exception for me I, I feel special now so I owe them lots of money uh, and it, it has nine percent interest rate and then it increases over New Year it becomes ten percent and then by May if I haven't paid everything by May next year it's going to be 15% interest rate I might as well sell my testicles because I can afford that I don't need the testicles anymore you know I have uh, two babies now soon so I'm done my purpose of life has been completed no but um, yeah so then that's how it goes I'm a little bit in low purchase mode but I also feel like I need to buy some necessary things like like some furniture because it's a big mess now just banana boxes well it was banana boxes everywhere now it's slightly better uh, and I figured okay a couple of thousand nook a couple of hundred euros here and there uh, to make things a lot better okay that's fine but I still can't pay for paving this the, I want I want the asphalt in the uh, you know in the front of the house and stuff uh, can't afford that but I did actually buy um, Ryobi snowblower I wanted the big one two-stage snowblower um, but I ended up with a one-stage snowblower instead uh, I will have another a whole video about the whole snowblower I in, initially I didn't know jack shit about snowblower I've been watching lots of videos learning stuff and uh, I okay yeah we were like Bjorn I like your videos why didn't you go for ego yeah I know I could have gone for ego the problem is that ego is not that common in Norway uh, the ego system sounds actually I mean what I've seen it's it's pretty awesome the design even the cells the act the passive cooling and all that uh, but it's not that common it's also also kind of expensive and I have to choose and there was other thing yeah and also the e ego uh, system doesn't include all the stuff I'm looking for because I actually want to change I have a the big mix now I have a little bit of core craft I think it's called from Klaus Sulson. I have some Bosch uh, lawnmower and uh, the leaf blower that's Bosch which is good it shares the battery oh, go 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 you can go now woman man he doesn't realize that uh, it's it's his turn to go yeah it's very common that Norwegians they um, they don't read the traffic properly and they yeah they're waiting for no reason thinking that they have to yield for something but they don't they have the right to wait yeah remember it's called it's better English it, it, you can say it's it's not uncommon that's bad English that's double negation instead of saying it's not uncommon you should say it is common yeah better English yeah it's funny right Asian guy trying to teach you English <laughs> we see oh yeah yeah cruise control voice okay good, good. Um, but uh, yeah so uh, oh, sorry I'm jumping a little bit back and forth between the topics here sorry th this was initially um, Stormbag uh, video but uh, seems like we uh, include a bunch of other stuff yeah, I should also na name that in the title of course but but what the heck take over light up block I just used the what I used the thing for just a couple of minutes before the thing was blocked again. Han gammel Erik. Han var fint hvis gammel Erik var her. Kunne varme opp skiten litt, ja. Mannskiten. Ok, anyway. Um, Alright, back to driving manually again. <laughs> Which means I have to focus slightly on the... I, I have to pay attention to the speed so it doesn't go too fast or too slow. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, so that's the stuff. Yeah, I, I bought a snowblower because there's... I have a big front yard, or what they would call it, 
and there's been it's been snowing and I, in the beginning I just use an, a regular spada shovel shovel right uh, and then no that didn't cut it so I, then I bought Fiskars classic everyone I, trust me everyone and the mother in Norway they use Fiskars classic it's this big snow uh, shuffle thing uh, I bought it second hand because I was dirt poor <laughs> <laughs> for 400 nook the guy put some I think he sprayed some Benga lock on some parts that had uh, torn out uh, uh, red uh, paint but whatever it works but yeah that one is very efficient uh, um, for moving snow but uh, at one point I figured that okay um, it's still a lot of work I need a snowblower so I had to purchase that one second hand also I could probably buy a uh, branch banking new and get it as company expense, but I'm not sure. There's always a borderline between private use and company. But usually, I think in general, if I buy something that is battery powered, I can usually take that as company expense since it's all it's it's about what I do, right? Maybe if I buy a battery powered um, uh, racer, maybe that one is not too relevant. But at least power tools like this. Yeah, I'm gonna make video. But uh, since I bought from Finn, then it's just private use, a private, uh, yeah. Uh, I can't get a, a tax deduction or uh, whatever on it. But whatever, so it works great, yeah, the, the snow blower. Oh, yeah, the reason why I bought from him was that uh, he also included an extra charger and, um, and a, was it a six amp hour battery? So I have now a, a four and a six hour, amp hour battery, I think. 30, this is 36 volt system uh, and supposedly you can mix them you can mix the two amp hours uh, even though it might not be recommended because they might have different uh, internal resistance but at least it works so yeah uh, so I'll cover more of that in another episode um, maybe I have to wait for new snowfall uh, because now it's yeah well actually in a couple of uh, well, by the end of the week now it's going to everything is going to melt We'll, we've been getting wind from the north and then it will turn and we'll get wind from the south so instead of getting minus 10 degrees celsius suddenly we'll get plus 5 degrees celsius so i'm just hurrying now to this is the whole snow management man you have no idea as a daddy as a house owner um i have to manage the snow and look at the weather forecast and the temperature and i have to get rid of the snow in the front yard but also in the backyard and i want to shuffle away all that stuff before it melts because otherwise it will melt and become slushy and then it might also freeze over it becomes cold again uh, but i have dumped lots of the snow i have a nice little um, what you call it skrent uh, um, i have a nice slope where i can dump snow off there and also dump some stuff to my neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I actually, that's, I think that's illegal to dump snow on your neighbor. Uh, but um, yeah, so um, lots of stuff going on, right? And what else is it? Um, yeah, th that's pretty much it. And what about other cars? You're what, what, how, well, yeah, okay, okay. Let me answer most common question that I get hammered on Facebook and everywhere, man. Uh, uh, yesterday I, I, w I was busy I, I didn't want to check my Facebook I have a Facebook page and you can message me on the Facebook page and I get spam with the same stuff over and over again and sorry if I haven't replied to you guys because uh, it would just take too much time unfortunately uh, I, I don't I don't run a consultancy service here uh, I'm just doing this one man and um, uh, I'm a daddy and shit like that and uh, man, I have to say man feeding the baby is just a big time sink well, okay I know it's family time okay it's quality time but it just takes a lot of time man the baby eats so slow compared to daddy <laughs> yeah and then she wants to play with daddy's nose and shit you know and then she spits out the food and then she wants water okay I give her water she drinks water from a cup and then she throws the cup on the floor like shit woman <laughs> oh but anyway yeah sorry so yesterday i think i haven't checked my inbox my facebook inbox uh, facebook page yeah not the person in one and a half two months and there was probably around 50 60 messages and most of them were well, many of them were asking hey bjorn 
between uh, uh, Model Y and uh, x Bank G9 and uh, Neo EL7, uh, EL6, which one do you recommend? I'm like, oh, I can't answer you, uh, you know. Just like me, you know, when I, when I wanted to buy um, a snowblower, I didn't message uh, uh, Raibio uh, and... No, I'm sorry, not Raibio. Did I say it? Did I? Ryobi, yeah. It's just that I used to play this game, uh, Ragnarok Online, where there was a there was a creature called Raibio. So I keep saying Raibio, but I meant Ryobi, of course. Yeah. But um, I, I don't message uh, Ryobi or uh, Ego asking them which, uh, which snowblow I should buy, right? Uh, or I don't message the YouTuber and ask them. But I, I try to figure up my... I look at the videos look at the pros and cons of one stage, two stage snowblowers and different brands and also look at what's available in my country, prices and shit also consider uh, what my needs are and how thick my wallet is also how much space does it take, you know the big, I mean it looks masculine to have a freaking big ass uh, two stage snowblower with propulsion and heated, uh, heated uh, grip and shit like that uh, but um, it takes up more space in the garage and uh, the garage is also my studio so that's why I ended up with a slightly smaller one, but it's not the smallest one. It's not like the one that looks like a freaking broom and it has like just it spits one. Okay, no, it's slightly better than that list. The snowblower I have, and also another thing I need to consider is that the snowblower, typically, um, since I, I have gravel surface now, um, um, <laughs> I don't have asphalt. You can't then you can't scrape it all the way to the bottom. Uh, otherwise, you just kick up lots of gravel. Yeah, uh, worst case, you could then uh, throw that rock or gravel towards house, car, near, park cars nearby or something, or at your neighbor, <laughs> which actually happened. The one rock flew all the way to the neighbor. I was like, oh shit, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> uh, no, but um, uh, um, so I had to do the research myself, and then I ended up with the one I ended up with. And that, this is my answer to you guys, all you guys who keep asking me, which car should you buy? Sorry, Mac, I, I, I can't do a deep analysis of your needs, your wallet, uh, where you, how many wives you have, how, uh, where, how many uh, cabins you have. Uh, so that's why I don't answer, because I try to answer some of them. Oh yeah, you know what, the, the quick answer, get Tesla, buy Tesla. I'm not joking, because there is a high possibility that you will be happy with Tesla, you know? It's, uh, but if, it's, if I say, uh, uh, you should buy the Lexus UX300e, you will be, <laughs> there's a high chance you will be unhappy with that car. Sorry, Toyota, but the, the Lexus is simply not a good car. So by just saying, yeah, buy Tesla, then there's a high chance you will be happy, you know? And as long as most people are happy, then the society works, right? <laughs> <laughs> I could I should be a politician <laughs> you can't make everyone happy right so as long as the majority is happy then you're doing a good, good job as a politician um, but um, yeah another very common question is when are you testing this car when you're testing that car I get this question a lot on YouTube on live stream on Facebook uh, it's actually I mean you Bjorn I mean, people are like, hey, Bjorn I like your videos stop bitching you know you, you get off your high horse. No, no, no. Okay, I, thank you very much for... Uh, it, it's actually... I, I feel honored. I feel flattered that people keep asking me about this. I, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, because it means that people want my review. They, they have watched other reviews out there, but they want my review, which is awesome. You know, it means that I must have, I must have done something good. The only problem is that I get hammered with these questions. Like, when are you getting Highland? When are you getting an EV9 for testing? When are you getting this? Uh, I, sorry, I don't know when they are ready. I can then ask the, I can ask Kia or I can ask Mashkus. I can ask the other guys, when are the cars ready? But it's like, it's like the kid, the toddler asking you, when are we there yet? Are you there yet? And you'll be like, uh, you look at the navigation, you look at the stow and be like, okay, I, I, sorry kid, I don't know when we will arrive, but we will try to get there as fast as, fast as possible. Now imagine having 10 kids in the backseat, 100 kids in the backseat 
asking you the same question. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? When are we going to go over there? When, when are we going to go? When are we going to go to Deutschland? When are we going to go to Denmark? I want to go to Legoland. When, you know, that, that's basically how it is for me. <laughs> um, yeah. So as soon as I get the cars, then you will see videos in my channel. That's how it is. And then another very common question is, which OBD adapter you use? I use OBD LX. It's green. I've shown you many, many times. Which app is it? It's Car Scanner. And it's uh, Sky My Tesla. Or, yeah, mostly those two apps I use. Wait, can I use uh, Cruise Control now? What? Still clean light up. Shit, man. Okay, anyway. So is this uh, long enough? Uh, no, it's only 43. Okay, we can hold, we can do a long run. Okay, no worries. So yeah, um, lots of stuff going on. Um, uh, the garage, by the way, nowadays, since it's snowy, then I tend to pull in snow inside the garage. Uh, and the garage is heated. And also, this is always the dilemma. Uh, which temperature do I set in the garage? I set it to around eight to 10 degrees Celsius. Um, when it comes to dehumidifying the, the air in there, it's not optimal. Uh, yeah, I also have some vents. I open the vents also to vent out some stuff. Uh, but I don't want to open it too much, especially when it was freezing cold outside, minus 12 degrees Celsius. Um, but I get moisture in there. And Idehus, yeah, they designed the garage to have a slight slope towards the, the gate the, or the opening, right? Well, but the only problem is that it's not perfect. So many times the water <laughs> runs the wrong way. And then I have banana boxes. Uh, well, fortunately not the banana boxes, not the empty ones I use for banana box tests, but I have banana boxes with items I haven't uh, uh, well put on the shelf yet because I'm waiting for to install the shelf. I'm waiting to paint the walls before I do that. So then rigging banana boxes with items get wet because water runs over there. Uh, maybe I should have put the uh, banana boxes on top of something that is waterproof. Yeah, like some Leica blocker or some, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm not 100% happy with that uh, design. It was supposed to be sloping towards the gate. Uh, so then I end up having to use this broom to try to mop or pr brush some water towards the gate or towards the exit, the front gate. But what I should do, of course, is to uh, rinse off the car before I enter uh, the, the, the garage. But it's not always practical to do that. Yeah. And also in winter in general, you know, we have Utekran. We have an outside tap. Uh, but in winter, it's closed because everything is frozen. So then I can't use high pressure water, water during winter. Maybe I, if I design the house differently, I could have done it. Anyway, uh, but I recently learned that Ry Ry Ryobi, they have um, a battery driven, or well, they have some uh, some uh, pressure washers, but I, I <laughs> the battery driven one, the, the portable one looks like a drill, like, like a, yeah. That one um, uses the same battery as the, the, the snowblower. So I was like, mm, I need to get in the Ryobi uh, uh, ecosystem here. But I need to have two different uh, battery. Uh, it has to be some 18 volt system and also some uh, 36 volt. Ryobi also has this very nice battery driven uh, air pressure uh, thingy, uh, tire pressure. Uh, you know, they want to inflate the tires. You can set the, the desired uh, uh, PSI bar and then it would just up to that one. Very practical when you get press cars and they don't have the correct uh, tire pressure. And I, in the past, I've been going to gas station, but I figured that I should try to do as much as possible at home to save time. Um, but I want that one. There's a lot of stuff I want for Christmas, but I, I simply cannot buy stuff. I've been buying some necessary stuff, but yeah, too bad. Uh, there's so much stuff I want. I also email Ryobi in Norway. It was some kind of, yeah, some Norwegian uh, place, supposedly import, I'm not sure. I was like, hey, you know, I like your system. Uh, uh, would you guys be willing to give me some discount? Um, or I don't know if I can get free items, that'd be even better. Uh, because I've been getting uh, some companies, they throw items at me for free. Uh, and it's actually, you can say, eh, Bjorn, you're begging. Well, true, I'm begging in a way, but I like, I mean, I, 
it's a good sign that I, I actually like many of the Ryobi system and the, the Ryobi tire pressure thing, the wash pressure washer, the, the snow blower and stuff like that. Uh, uh, because it means that I'm genuinely interested in it and I would then want to show it off to my audience and now it's actually in a way it's lost opportunity for a Ryobi because I can't afford those items uh, so maybe next year or I don't know when I can eventually buy them and start showing the, stu the stuff uh, just like you know just like uh, EcoFlow uh, for the record uh, EcoFlow never uh, um, they never um, uh, provided me anything for free. I would like to get that shit, of course. Uh, but no, they've been getting lots of free advertisement from me. EcoFlow, you guys know EcoFlow, right? You know, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, uh, photo.no, they gave me a little bit of discount. I think it was 10% discount on the EcoFlow when I purchased it. So I was like, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I will be purchasing. Uh, uh, my camera equipment from photo that I know from now on uh, but uh, yeah the Ryobi system uh, I like it I like it um, but yeah so lots of stuff back and forth uh, like man I, I could talk forever about stuff going on in my, in my home in my head like stuff I want to buy I'm like oh yeah I like that's the oh yeah my lighter is still blocked what the fuck okay um and then when yeah, yeah and so, so some people are like yeah did you did, did you get the gravel in front of the house yet no like the house was finished first of november it's is it what it's 12 12th of december it's been one and a half months now and idehus well it's not <laughs> always blame contractor abc idehus has not well it's not idehus that's the thing it's another company they use idehus okay they build the house but they have done different subcontractors for for the digging part, for the plumbing, for the electric electricity, right? But the electrician, when once we move in, I realized, oh shit, uh, the fridge, it, it we lack um, um, an out, a power outlet for the fridge where we want it. So I, I email uh, uh, the electrician company and the guy I contacted. He was like, oh, okay, okay, and then he will he send the the dude, the installer guy. He said he was he would come on a Friday. He didn't come on Friday, but he came on Monday, and then we we got the stuff settled up, installed, no problem, right? That happened in the beginning of uh, November, no problem. But then Idehus, it, it's like, yeah, I remember. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna be open about this. Idehus, yeah, uh, Rumerike Idehus, uh, they gave me the loan. I'm like, thank you, thank you very much, man. Uh, highly appreciate it. Like, I was just. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I was afraid I would lose the house to the bank or some shit because I couldn't afford it. So I, have, I had to be grateful that they who's gave me the loan in the first place. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to live in, I, I would, you know, I would have to, and also I had to sell the old house. So I would be stuck with renting some shit. So, but, but, but I have to be honest about the idea who's, I mean, I, they are then, well, we, we, we were delayed by one year. That's one thing. Yeah, because they made a mistake. They thought they they send uh, uh, they send uh, the application to get yeah you had to get get permission to build and they didn't. And we, I was waiting and when, every time I asked the guy you know uh, when uh, how, what is your status he said oh, we're still waiting for the, for the municipality. I said, okay 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 and then spring passed summer passed and they were like oh fuck we fucked up. I'm like uh, okay. Did I get any compensation for it? Nine. <laughs> and uh, economy, uh, I mean, uh, financially or economy-wise, I've taken a big hit because suddenly the, the interest rate went through the roof. Instead of the house will be finished last year, it will finish this year, right? So, but yeah, okay. Should I bitch too much about this? Well, they gave me the loan, so I'm happy, right? I'm living in a house now. But they don't, I don't have gravel in front of the house. They, oh no, they, they, there's the, the big rocks, you know, they call it sub, sub or something. It's a bigger rock thing. So so we have now this this semi-fine sand and this that shit sticks to the shoes. And then I pull that sand in the car and it sticks. So you can't just knock, knock, knock to get it out. Uh, and also I pull it inside the house. 
and in the beginning it's spreading all over the house even though we try to scrape off and we have doormat inside and outside yeah but we also yeah another thing i bought a roborock a second hand i couldn't buy a new one but i bought a second hand roborock it was called roborock uh, 6 s6 ultra wide or whatever no what it's called again i don't remember yeah but um yeah so that one was great uh, i like it um in the beginning wife was like ah you uh bought one second hand like yeah yeah it's black i'm like well do you do you have do you have anything against black and she, hey, she wanted white oh okay well <laughs> but it's fine now it, it saves us some time the rubber rock but still they haven't inst they haven't uh, slapped down the gravel well, now the winter comes so now uh, huh? are you supposed to just slap down the gravel thing there the big rocks you know the same things that uh, we have in front of the old house you know, they, they, when i walk you hear that in the video you hear that yeah I, I don't like it personally but if i had to choose between getting that sand all over the car and inside the house rather than the big rocks yeah but no, uh, but then now that i started using the the snow blower then uh, those would be heavy big heavy projectiles <laughs> uh, if I uh, yeah scrape it another problem by the way with the one stage well, now we are back we are back with the whole uh, snow blower thing again uh, which one should I buy the, the one stage snow blower they, they are cheaper smaller the problem with them is that they scrape quite deep and to the surface uh, whereas the two-stage snowblower, they have a little, um, I don't know what you call it, um, there's a plastic piece which is sliding on it, so they actually don't go that deep, or they don't, they don't, they don't, yeah, uh, yeah, so if you want to scrape it smooth, like here, for example, you know, roll here, then you want to have the one-stage snowblower, the two-stage one, they, uh, they might leave a, a half centimeter gap, but that's good because they say that the, the two-stage snowblowers, they are uh, uh, good on any surface, whereas the one-stage snowblower, the one I have, is recommended on smooth surfaces, not gravel, because you could dig some stuff. But I found a solution because you can just you can tip you 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 you, you, you tilt it, right? So you tilt it slightly up the front of it. So then you can actually change the angle and you can change how deep you want it to dig. So it actually works for me. We are getting back to the whole thing that oh, which car should you buy? Well. You know, I could recommend to you, no, don't buy this because of that, because of your house. But, but by the end of the day, if you find a solution, if you can live with a Tesla, then buy it. Yeah. Um, well, we are back here again. Okay. <laughs> we are almost back to the starting point. And this, this place is really beautiful, this section here with all the snow covered. Uh, yeah. And also, I can tell you that um, I, I like uh, Yesheim more and more now because Yesheim um it's a couple of degrees celsius colder than oslo so okay uh, when we get it's been freezing freaking cold lately yeah then okay oslo is minus five minus seven and then yes it might be minus 10 minus 12. okay that's true um but the snow stays fluffier longer i like that wifey also likes that in oslo the winters over there it's like okay we get some snow and then in a couple of days it melts and just rains and shit and then bleh, and then it's just bleh, like wet snow all over the place but in yesheim uh, it stays maybe minus two minus three degrees right versus oslo is zero so then it just stays drier i don't mind if it's a couple of degrees colder to me that's fine i'm a viking i'm a i'm a teddy bear i can handle it just fine so um yeah and also i found out that most uh, stuff is available in yesheim we have bil tema rusta remen uh, we have shopping mall we have eguns we have some sushi store uh, we have been exploring around there uh, finding some they, we have, there are some asian stores also actually a pretty big one that is not typical asian it's like a mediterranean uh, but also includes lots of asian stuff and we were quite impressed of all the asian food we found there uh, so yeah, so we've been spending some time exploring Yesheim and I like it a lot. I what sh schmutz. But there is one thing missing in Yesheim, which is baby shop. Like the frunk man. Um, around Oslo, 
Al Nabru, there's plenty of baby shops there, but in Yesheim, there is there was none until one opened recently. And um, yeah. And on on top of Yesheim Storcenter. Uh, not that great selection. And we found out afterwards that uh, some of the I don't know, but some of the items they were really expensive. I, we bought this uh, this uh, nice and warm uh, 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 one piece or whatever you call it, right? For um, for Isabel. And wait, wait, was it? Um, I don't remember. If this was wool. I wonder if this was merino wool. Well, I don't remember. But it was nice and warm, and it was expensive. 1,300 nook, uh, around 120 euros. And I said, okay, well, it's nice and warm, so that's why it should be expensive, right? It always also has a has a has a hat, uh, hat there, right? Um, integrated. I was like, okay, okay, great. Okay, we bought it for uh, Isabel. We used it a couple of days, and then uh, we went over to uh, Mangrud Center, uh, baby care, uh, Mangrud. Saw the same thing over there for 900 nook. We're like, what? What? We spent 400, it was like 30% more expensive. <laughs> so it's funny because now, every time we refer to that uh, piece of uh, clothing, uh, I just, I, I t tell wifey, it's, it's that expensive piece, right? You, you want <laughs> his belt to wear the expensive one. She's like, yeah, yeah that one, yeah, okay. Uh, well, yeah, so um, that's how it goes now. Um, and yeah, I also found out that, okay, I was concerned that uh, I might uh, spend more time driving back and forth to Oslo, but I actually end up going to Oslo only once or twice per week. And also when I, uh, yeah, uh, I try to then combine stuff I need to do in Oslo in one run, so I don't have to uh, go there daily or some shit. So uh, yeah, it's been, I've been mainly just stationary around here and also, I mean, around in the north. And this was also closer when I do my range test and stuff. And even yesterday, I did uh, an acceleration test of this car. Acceleration, noise test, and also um, parts of the headlight test. And I was surprised that I spent a little bit over an hour doing all that stuff. Normally it would take, well, almost two hours because I have to dr travel yeah, from Arnabru over and stuff. So. So overall, uh, I have to say, I mean, uh, it's a bit different. Yeah, in the beginning, I was, I was not used to moving over to Yesem. I was like, huh, um, uh, it was that safety that that I was used to everything around Alnabru. And also before that, I I lived at uh, Haugerud, which is a little bit up up the hill. So in a way, I've been living around uh, Grudal, Alnabru, Haugerud area for. About 20 years, I think. No, yeah, maybe longer. I don't remember. Over 20 years, yeah. See, it was a bit weird to move away there, but I now I've like yes and better and better. Nice neighbors, uh, fairly quiet there, you know. So, um, yeah. But uh, still, it's lacking a lot of stuff. I can show you guys eventually in a, in a dedicated uh, house uh, video. Still lacking lots of stuff in the house. Uh, I purchased some uh, pasienne, yeah, what's it called again? Sun blinds for the main bathroom, but then all the other rooms, they just have cardboard. I cover them. In the beginning, I even used the the the, the, <laughs> the test lot, the the heat shield from Evonex, uh, car car heat shield stuff, uh, which worked. It looked okay. But then when we look at the, look at the house from the outside, I was like, oh, that's fugly. <laughs> then I just bought some cardboard, the stuff that you're supposed to cover the floor when you paint, uh, which would be nice to be. I use the leftover once I can have time to paint the floor. And I also have to treat the, the garage floor with some, uh, some kind of uh, paint or something, coating, because dust now sticks to the floor like, I don't know, crazy and then if I try to brush it there's lots of dust kicking up uh, so one way to do it is I have to wet the floor before and and then I brush it yeah but I uh, speak of that man um, also one thing I want to buy but I I don't feel like I can afford it yet because I've been buying some some stuff lately 
um, I want to buy this uh, Ryobi uh, uh, battery powered uh, thing, uh, uh, pressure washer. Or well, other pressure washers might work, but I just like the idea that I could bring that with me and some bottles of water, and I could then clean the car. Like that, like now, if I had the pressure washer, I could just. I could just pressure wash the freaking uh, uh, LiDAR <laughs> on NEOs or sometimes it would be practical if I could just on site pressure wash uh, some uh, the car I'm, I'm out at, right? Yeah, but I don't want a big one. Uh, Bryobi, they have a big one, uh, a big one, uh, but I want a small one that looks like a screwdriver or the, whatever, the you know, black and dark screwdriver thing. Um, or drill or whatever they call it. I think in Norwegian they call it drill, which is an electric screwdriver thing. Look, we have the pistol grip, you know? I don't know what the heck it's called in English. Um, but um, yeah, my point was that I learned that it's called siphoning. Um, some pressure washers, they can siphon water from a bucket. Uh, I'm not sure if every pressure washer allows you to do that, because if, if it's not designed for it, it could ruin the pump because the pumps are not designed to be run dry. They need water because I think water also acts as lubrication. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. Or oh, spit also works. <coughs> okay, but um, um, was yeah, yeah, because in winter I have to go to K wash. And also, this is also something I. Uh, I was researching on where the heck do I wash my cars? Well, uh, there is a place in Yesheim you can wash, but sometimes there is Stau. Yeah, it's freaking Waschstau. What are you calling it? Waschstau, right? Is that it? Was that correct? Was that, was that good German? Yeah, Waschstau. Um, uh, and then, but then I realized that that's just a waste of time. If I have to waste time going from home to somewhere, to wash the car and then drive back again. Sometimes maybe someone is in front of me even. That, that's a waste of time. Wait, what about people with fossil cars? They also have to do that shit. Uh, they have to go from home to fill up gas. <laughs> I wouldn't waste time on that shit, man. I have charging at home. I have three, I have plenty of charging at home. Haters gonna hate. No, but so, but in winter, in summer, no problem. But in winter, the, the outdoor uh, tap is frozen. Well, I was thinking, hey, wh why don't I just buy this thing? I can siphon water. Yeah, I want it. Me wants it. Because then I can, there is also, it, it comes with a container, a 20 liter container. I can put hot water there. And then I can actually pressure wash with hot water. Um, and I could do that in front of the house. So that, that, oh man, that's my wet dream, literally. Because if I, for example, this car now, it's been driving now in some salt schmutz fest. And then uh, before I get in the garage, I, I can visit K wash, but now it's like Stau and shit. That's regular Stau. By the time I'm home around four, there will be yes, him Stau and the wash Stau. Uh, and then the problem is that uh, even when you wash it there, you still have to drive a couple of kilometers back home and then by the time you're home, the car is dirty again. <laughs> That's how it is. Welcome to Norway. No, but then it picks up shit uh, and I want to wash the pressure wash the inside of the wheel arches to get rid of the of the, the ice, no, no, well, schmutz, ice, slush build up there, sleet. So that, that oh, that would, be, that would be heaven, man, if I had the, the pressure washer, I can siphon hot water you can even siphon it from a bottle. It's like, oh man, oh, me wants it. Yeah, for, for now, no, okay. Um, so yeah, when people say that uh, no money can't buy you happiness, well, it can. <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. So yeah, that was a little glimpse of uh, Tesla Bjorn's life nowadays. Um, yeah, and eventually, um, yeah, also, okay, I should mention that the Rybio system, and I'm quite pumped up about the Rybio nowadays. You guys, uh, Rybio, yeah. Um, um, the Rybio system is, uh, wait, was it Ryobi? Ryobi. Ryobi, Ryobi system, sorry. The Ryobi, some, the, you have the HP, yeah, the high power st stuff that requires uh, 36 volt, like the, 
snowblower but then some items like the the portable compressor thing that one runs on 18 volt there is no 36 volt system so so then eventually i need to get 18 volt and the 36 volt set but i don't need that many batteries because fortunately uh with those power tools you usually only use one tool at a time so if i have 10 tools or, or let's say five six tools on each voltage right uh, they can be they can share the battery i think that's the brilliant part about about it um, and as long as i have a backup one so i can charge one set and then uh, have another one fresh then th that's good enough for me um, and also, I, I know uh, Ryobi, they also have um, uh, this, this power station thing, yeah, where you can, it has an inverter there and some electronics, and then you can snap on, or strap on some uh, power batteries there, and it will become like an EcoFlow. But the spec, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's weak in an EcoFlow, and I, I like 2.4 kilowatt on EcoFlow, but it can, it can provide 2.4 kilowatt continuous. So, so I will still use EcoFlow in that regard. I'm not gonna go bananas and get the uh, Ribio system. Um, so, but uh, when it comes to the other stuff I have, like I have a, a hedge trimmer and a, what do you call it, cunt clipper. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what it's called again. There is a, it's like a, another trimmer. Yeah, it's like a grass trimmer thing. That one is one system, and then I have the Bosch system. Eventually, I should get rid of all that and just stick with the Ryobi system. Ryobi, sorry, Ryobi. Um, been playing Ragnarok online too long. But uh, yeah, so um, long, long as uh, rant in, input uh, about what's going on, and uh, I will get back to. Uh, uh, wait, still can't use. Adaptive cruise control. What? Man, I, I don't know how... How should I clean the LiDAR now? Because I think you're not supposed to rub some stuff there. Right? You could scrape the LiDAR glass. Uh, and there's some, there's some schmutz on the LiDAR glass. Um, I, can use, uh, I can use wiper juice, maybe. As long as, as, long as there's some lubrication... Uh, wait, 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 wait. What about, what about spit? Because spit is thicker. It has this, this whisk, especially if I do a, a good... <coughs> you know, sometimes it's so thick that you can chew on it. So that is, it's very viscous, I think it's called. Then that means that uh, it shouldn't hurt the, the LiDAR glass too much, right? Actually, if it is it very viscous and thick, it might actually absorb the dirt, right? Yeah. And then I just have to make sure to rinse it afterwards. afterwards. Oh no, I should have brought the squirt bottle. Ah. Oh. Yeah, if you're a new owner, always bring squirt bottle, ABC, because you need that shit for when the LiDAR gets blocked. Okay. Um, Anyway, I think I have uh, ranted enough now. I felt like I needed to uh, include lots of stuff. Uh, I, love, I have a lot to say. I, I can still go on, but uh, uh, you guys be like, hey, what the heck, man? So <laughs> that would be another episode then. <laughs> anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.